Hello and welcome to my lab. Today's the day. It's finally time to put the oven to the test. We have a temporary program in the controller. We have a temporary program in the HMI. What this will let us do is test it at 25% power and collect data while we do it. So we're just going to uh, run this thing at 25% power and check the data that we get afterwards. So let's roll this thing outside where it can't do any harm and turn it on. Here it is uh, booted up and everything. When I press this button, it will uh, turn on the power and start heating the coil. And we should see wattage. We should see this turn up quite a bit. So I'm going to be pressing the button and standing back for a little bit. So let's see how that goes. That, seem, that seems to be working. Not very much. Feel the slightest bit of heat. It's on. It's only reading like 30 watts, but it is on. I think that's actually kind of nice. We'll leave it on that low for a little while. I'll just see what happens. So you'll note the temperature here. It's uh, 16C because we've got the door open here. But yeah, well, while we wait for that to soak up and maybe heat up inside, uh, let's go talk about what's actually going on in here so far and where we want to go. Okay, so it's actually a different day now. It started to rain, which is not good for testing. Today's a lot better for testing. So let's talk about the system and then get back to it. So what we have is just our little box here which uh, is very artistically drawn. And what our system is doing, essentially, is just adding heat, energy, energy, into this box to raise the temperature. And the rate at which we're adding energy to the box is wattage. We'll just talk about that in wattage for now. Um, <clears throat> now, as we add energy to the box, of course, the temperature is going to go up, because that's the point. But it's going to go up at a rate proportional to what I'm going to call the capacitance, because I'm an electrical engineer, times the energy that we put in, which is actually joules, so I'll just put a J here. Then the other thing to consider is that uh, energy is going to be leaving the system here through our insulation and everything, and that is going to be re relative to the difference in temperature between the chamber itself the hot chamber and the ambient uh, room temperature air, divided by the resistance, the overall resistance between those two. So we don't know what the resistance is and we don't know what this capacitance is, but we can actually derive them experimentally. We know what this difference in temperature is and we can know what the wattage is. So let's focus on this wattage for now and then we'll talk about how we're going to derive these later. Which brings me to why I put a current shunt resistor in the control box. That will allow me to see the amperage going into the element, and then I can calculate how much wattage is being dissipated that way. Now, early testing is showing that that signal isn't very reliable right now, so we might have to do something else. But I bought a new tool for the oscilloscope, which should help us out quite a bit. So why don't we just go over there and look at that? All right. Here's the machine plugged into the 240 volt power so it's all ready to go. As you can see, we've been messing with the HMI and uh, we'll, we'll get to this code later. But for now, uh, I just want you to look at this number. This is the real time uh, power output that's calculated from the current shunt resistor. The machine isn't actually on right now yet. It's reporting 700 watts through the element. So. Eh, it looks like it's a noisy signal. Um, I, I could probably hunt that down and fix it, but uh, that would take a lot of work and I don't think it's worth it. So I'm going to ignore this number for now and we'll actually just measure it with my oscilloscope. So I'm going to turn on the machine at 25% uh, power and we'll just go look at it over in the scope. 
Okay, so here we have the machine on. Uh, I've got an amp clamp right here. If you haven't seen one of these, these are great. You just clamp it around a wire and it'll tell you the amperage going through the wire. So this is real-time data coming into the scope. And you'll see here that this thing is on about 25% of the time, which is what we told it to do. So if we look closer, this waveform is actually a lot cleaner than I thought it would be. Uh, and that's why I thought we'd have to have a current shunt resistor in there. But uh, with how clean this is and consistent, we should just be able to use the duty cycle or the uh, percent of time that it's on versus off to assume how much wattage is going into the system. And that's, that's probably gonna do it for us. So instead of trying to get feedback, we're just going to say that 25% uh, of this on time versus 75% off is gonna give us 25% wattage of the full wattage. And I can just measure it with the scope here to uh, double check that that's working. And then we can continue from there. After we have the wattage done, we can conduct several tests, probably about 10 of them, uh, at increments of 10% power, this will give us a set of graphs that we can derive those previously mentioned uh, constants from. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then uh, we'll look at the data. All right, we've conducted the test, collected the data, and the scope reads good wattage on all the data points, so uh, we can move on. But before we go looking at the data graphs that we collected, we should talk about the math that we're going to use and uh, we're really going to get into it here, so if you have an aversion to math, or heaven forbid, an allergy to math, uh, you might want to look away or skip ahead because this might kill you. Okay, for everyone else, uh, let's get into it. Here we have TC prime. Wow, that's probably the tallest T I've ever written. Anyway, TC is going to be the temperature of the chamber, and uh, prime, if you don't know calculus, Prime means it's the uh, rate of change, so here it's the change in temperature of the enclosure. This equation here that I just wrote down is the basis of everything. This is the model that I'm assuming everything is going to follow, and uh, this is what I'm probably going to refer to as the capacitance model. This here is joules per second, or energy per second, the energy that we're putting into the system per second. And here is the uh, capacitance. And this simplifies to wattage over capacitance. And to illustrate what capacitance means, let's say you've got a, a theoretical energy bucket and you're filling it with energy water. The size of the bucket is going to be your capacitance, the radius of that bucket. As that increases, as your capacitance increases, it takes more of this theoretical water, more, more filling of water, in order to get a given amount of water level rise. So our oven is an energy bucket and we're pouring energy into this bucket. So this represents the size of our theoretical energy bucket, which is our oven. But we don't really want the rate of change of temperature. We want to know the actual temperature or the, our predicted temperature for the future. So we'll use calculus to integrate and get the function that represents the temperature given the time. And there it is. This is wattage times time, which ends up being energy, over the uh, capacitance, which gives us a temperature, plus the starting temperature. So if we had a constant wattage, then this equation would give us the uh, temperature given time. Unfortunately for us, the uh, wattage here isn't that simple. This wattage here actually represents um, the wattage that we're putting in, which makes sense. But it's also the wattage that's coming out. We have to subtract the wattage that's escaping the oven because it's not a perfect insulator. Which is going to be equal to the uh, temperature in the chamber minus the temperature outside the chamber divided by the resistance. Uh, the resistance is essentially our insulation here. It's our total system insulation. In other words, the resistance to, for energy to flow out of our bucket. So here's where things start to get a little bit complicated is we're gonna add this all together and get this here, which is what we're looking for but there's a little bit of a problem. You see, there's a, a TC here, temperature of the chamber, uh, and the TC here. We're, we're looking for TC, so we're gonna have to solve this, and this is where it's gonna get a little bit hairy. This is the result. And uh, I'll be honest here, all intuition is lost at this point. But uh, I assure you it's correct. I'll explain it just for the sake of it, but uh, it, it's not intuitive. It's uh, the ambient temperature, times the seconds, plus the uh, capacitance times resistance times the temperature that we started with, plus the resistance times time times the wattage, all over the capacitance times the resistance, plus 
the time. So that's what we're looking for, but we still haven't found the capacitance value or the resistance value. Thankfully, this is much easier than, than this equation here. To get the resistance value, we just run a test at a constant wattage and it'll get up to temperature and whatever temperature it, it gets at finally and it can't get any hotter, that means it's at equilibrium. And what equilibrium means is that the wattage going into the system equals the wattage going out of the system. If you remember, the wattage going out of the system is this here and it contains R. So what we can do is solve for R. And here it is. So we can just conduct our test, uh, wait till it gets all the way up to the maximum temperature or around there, and then uh, plug that uh, temperature in. And we already know the wattage that we're putting into the system, and we've got R. Now, we can do a similar thing with capacitance, but it's not quite as convenient as this, and it's the only thing we have left to solve in our, um, our little equation over there. So uh, we'll just get our graph plug in the resistance, and then fiddle with the capacitance until the graph lines up. We get to do that because I'm an engineer and not a mathematician. So let me go do that, then we can look at the data that we get out of it. Let's do it. All right, so here we've already lined everything up, and uh, there's a lot going on here, so bear with me. Um, but what you're looking at is a, the final test that we did, the uh, highest power test, and this is full power for an hour, and then we cut power and let it cool down. The yellow line here, which you can only barely see now, is the real-time temperature data that we got from the oven uh, during the power section. And then the teal here is the real-time uh, real data from it cooling down afterwards. Then the blue line here is actually our prediction based on the math we just did. And it is lined up so well that you can only just barely see the yellow. So that's, that's great. And uh, you can see the red is only a little bit wrong. And I suspect that's because, you know, there's a lot more complexity here than our simple model. But that's, that's pretty good. That's quite, uh, quite good and I'm, I'm happy with it. The only problem is, is that uh, up here is only like 300 degrees Celsius. So even if we let it go for like four hours or something at max power, we'd only get to 320 degrees Celsius. So that's really disappointing. I want I wanted to get quite a bit hotter than that. I do think though that that's because I put those fire bricks in the bottom of the oven. And the reason I put those there was uh, to give it a, a hard surface on the bottom of the oven to begin with. But that was before I designed in the metal plate. And now in retrospect, I, I don't really think I need those fire bricks in there anymore. So what I think I'm gonna do is go back, pull those fire bricks out, and replace it with more of that ceramic wool because I've got some extra left over. That's gonna take more time and we're gonna have to redo these tests, unfortunately, which aren't, aren't quick. But the point of this project was to learn and uh, we're learning plenty. It's just so much that it's hard to fit in, uh, into a video conveniently. But I don't wanna make a video on this oven that's half baked, so we're gonna go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna go back, pull those bricks out, replace it with uh, the ceramic wool, and uh, we'll rerun the tests and uh, come back and look at the new data. So let's just skip to that through the magic of television. Okay, uh, quick update here. So I, uh, now that I replaced the brick, um, we re we're started running another test and uh, looking at the early data, um, it worked, in fact, It worked too good. So yeah, the reason that we couldn't get hot at all was definitely that fire brick. And now it's very much more insulative. I tried the test at uh, full power and we uh, started getting hotter in the chamber much faster. The other one, if the other one was this, this, this graph looked like this. Unfortunately, uh, we got too hot and burned the element, shorted and tripped the breaker. Uh, before I was able to save the data from the graph, so I don't have that data now. Um, so that kind of concludes the testing I can do at this moment. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of suspected that that element might not be able to handle what I was going to ask it to do. <sighs> Which means uh, I'm probably going to have to make a resistor out of that canthal wire I usually use. So that's not too big a deal, but uh, it's definitely going to delay things. So I think I'm gonna to have to arbitrarily cut this video short. Um, 
I really wanted to make this the last video, but there's just more we need to do. And I, I want to be thorough about this. I want to, you know, make this thing proper, so we're, we're going to do that. And I, I also want to definitely cover all the code. So I'll probably get some of that mortar or whatever you call it for kilns and make a canthal heater element and, and build it in proper. And then we'll test it again. <sighs> so, I guess we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.